This is the Los Angeles Times Grand Prix. A star-studded field and an array of legal horsepower rarely seen in American road racing. If you thought last year's Times Grand Prix was a barn burner, brother, hold your hat. Everyone, I'm Dave Despain. Welcome to another edition of the Glory Days, reliving the great moments, the great races in the history of motorsports. Riverside International Raceway is just a memory. An hour or so east of Los Angeles, a subdivision now stands on what was hallowed ground to those who live for speed. Speed was what made Riverside special back in the Glory Days. Its backstretch was one of the fastest in American racing. And in 1965, that seemingly endless strip of asphalt was traversed at breathtaking velocity by a remarkable field of international sports car racing stars. The Times Riverside Grand Prix was unprecedented. It had a record crowd, record purse, and record speed. The entry list included Jimmy Clark, world champion and Indy 500 winner in a Lotus 40. Former world champion Graham Hill of England in a McLaren Oldsmobile. Indianapolis winner and defending champion in this race, Parnelli Jones in a Lola Chevrolet. Bruce McLaren of New Zealand, whose name graces one of the world's great race car lines. Jim Hall of Texas in the radical Chevrolet-powered Chaparral. Mario Andretti, champion of the U.S. Ovals, destined for greatness in road racing. Up-and-coming star, Jackie Stewart, his Lola, powered by Chevrolet. Versatile Dan Gurney of California in a McLaren Ford. Walt Hanskin of New Jersey in a Lola Ford. And Mexican Grand Prix winner Richie Ginther in a Lotus 40. Now let's take a 1965 style onboard camera lap of Riverside with Skip Scott. All right, now we're coming onto the start finish line into a very fast left uphill turn. Brake slightly, back on the power, and ease her on around over. A few little bumps in there make it a little tricky. Now a short straight into a fast right. And now down approaching into the S's. into six. This is a sweeping right-hander, decreasing radius. Out of this one, swing out and down a short stroke, straight into seven. Up a little hill, break, gets the three marker. Down a gear, a decreasing left-hander, tuck it in, tuck it in. That's a good look at the racetrack. Let's see who's getting around it fastest. The man who called the action back in 1965 was Les Kiter. Here's Les to tell us how they qualify. The fastest is Bruce McLaren of New Zealand in a prototype McLaren Elva powered by an Oldsmobile engine. McLaren established a record lap of one minute, 26 and six tenths seconds. A real battle is expected between McLaren and Jim Hall, who sits second on the grid. Third is Jerry Grant from Kent, Washington in a Lotus Chevy followed by Pernelli Jones, Walt Hanskin, and a surprisingly fast John Cannon in a genie. Practice and qualification sessions have already taken the toll of many of the top drivers. Grand Prix sensation Jackie Stewart blew two engines and will not start. Scratch one Lola T70. USAC champ Mario Andretti was pushed off the track in the 20-lap consolation race. Scratch another Lola T70. Just announced is the surprise withdrawal of Jim Hall and the Chaparral 2C. The trouble? Rear end suspension. The Chaparral team will go with only one car. Half Sharp will be at the wheel, starting eighth on the grid. 
Jim Hall has withdrawn with rear suspension problems, uh, Bruce. And you, will this make your driving uh, strategy any different? Well, yes, because I would have had to go just as hard as I possibly could to have stayed in front of Jim. And uh, this, uh, this has really surprised me. And uh, it's certainly going to change the picture. I can't believe that we're going to be this lucky. A sun-baked crowd, upwards of 85,000, await the start of the Times Grand Prix. 77 laps and 200 miles through the twisting, tortuous Riverside track. The total purse is just under $50,000, one of the richest in road racing in the world. The cars are approaching from the false grid, a field of 40, the most impressive array of cars and drivers seen anywhere in road racing. The field of 40 is assembled, engines running, awaiting the green flag. Most of the top drivers from the world over. Bruce McLaren, Parnelli Jones, Half Sharp, Graham Hill, Jimmy Clark, Jerry Grant, Richie Ginther, Dan Gurney, Walt Hanskin, Chris Amon, Hugh P.K. Dibley, and more. The cars are set to go. Some delay, apparently trouble with one of the cars further back. Bruce McLaren, very anxious to get going. That's Jerry Grant next to McLaren, also upset about this long delay. The flag is ready. They're moving the problem car off, and there's the start. Walt Hanskin jumped out in front very quickly from the second row. McLaren, who was first on the grid, had a slow start, and is lost in the shuffle about eight places back. in turn two, an accident involving two cars. Don Wester and a genie, car number 60, seemed to slow to almost a stop and was hit in the rear by Charlie Cox and a Cooper, car number 39. Also involved is number 29, Rick Muther. The rest of the field is picking their way through the melee. There's no fire, but the ever alert emergency crew is spreading foam on the cars just to be sure. We'll try to get a report on the drivers. The year is 1965. The first lap collision at Riverside between Don Wester and Charlie Cox looked worse than it was. The drivers were okay. And out front, Walt Hanskin and Jerry Hansen wage a spirited battle for the lead, at least for a little while. Play-by-play -play man Les Kiter will soon be joined by pit reporter Chris Economaki. Through the S's, Hanskin leads Grant. Into turn six, that fast sweeping turn Grant just seconds behind Henskin. 20 seconds back is the third place car. Bob Bondurant's pace setter Lola T70. Fourth is the Chaparral of Half Sharp, followed by Parnelli Jones, Graham Hill, and Bruce McLaren. Henskin leads into seven. Grant not giving up an inch. Quite a battle here. Bondurant still third, but Jones is edged by Sharp into fourth. McLaren has also taken sharp and tries the inside to get by John Cannon in car 22, but doesn't make it. Hanskin and Grant still at it. Number 77 is Dan Gurney's McLaren Ford. Gurney was 15th on the grid and still well down on the pack. Jimmy Clark, Grand Prix champion this year, is behind Gurney in his Lotus 40, but running smoothly. Back to the pit straight, it's Jerry Grant, but where's Hanskin? Walt is nowhere in sight. There's Hanskin moving into the pits. The Bedminster, New Jersey veteran led for nine laps, but is into the pits. Getting out of the Mecham Lola, not a good sign. Grant inherits the lead on lap 10. Chris Economaki is in the pits to get the story from Hanskin. Walt, it was great while it lasted. What knocked you out? Well, I think we had a, a blown head gasket. And that did what? Well, it, it blew the water out, and uh, of course we overheated. And um, I just tried to keep it going as long as I could. But, uh, did waiting at the start have contributed to that condition, yeah, you think? Yeah, I think so. There's been a lot of criticism to the start. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It looks like Hanskin has company. McLaren is in, too. He's still in the car, however. McLaren was as high as third before making this visit. It looks as though they're... Yes, 
The mechanics are bringing a tire out. McLaren apparently picked up some debris from that first lap accident and will lose valuable time with this tire change. Jerry Grant is smoking. He's slowing down on the inside of turn nine. This pace must be extremely hard on the cars. McLaren is retired. His wheels are fastened by stud bolts, and the tire change took considerably more time than it might had he had knockoff of. McLaren is set. A little trouble getting into gear. At pit stop, one minute, 25 seconds. He's lost a lap. Jerry Grant is out of the car. He led for just two laps after taking over from Hanskin. Grant is apparently out of the race. Our reports indicate heating trouble. Again, the lead changes. After 12 laps, Bob Von Durant inherits first place. Half Sharp and the Chaparral moves into second as a result of McLaren's pit stay. In third, Graham Hill of England. The race average now, 103.2 miles per hour. He's making good use of that movable spoiler. Sharp's fastest lap is 127.3. McLaren is in the faster car, but 47 seconds is a lot of time to overcome. Another spin up the embankment and turning. Let's see if we can spot the car. It's Jerry Enton again. No other cars involved as Enton spun well off the track. He's out of the car, walking away under his own steam. Jimmy Clark closes the distance between his Lotus 40 and the Chaparral. Three seconds now, but there aren't enough laps remaining. McLaren has also turned it on. It's a race against the clock now. Sharp rounds turn nine on the last lap. He'll never be caught now. The jubilant Chaparral team with leader Jim Hall is rushing to the rail to wave Sharp in. Sharp takes the checker in record time. One hour, 56 minutes and 28 seconds. Average speed, 102.989 miles per hour. Second and just 11 seconds back is Jimmy Clark. McLaren crosses the line 22 seconds too late. A familiar scene in Victory Lane, Jim Hall, Hap Sharp, and the Chaparral. Sharp share of the purse is a record $14,640. Chris Economaki is on the scene with our microphone. Let's join him in the happy Chaparral team. Congratulations, Hap. A great drive. Thank you very much, Chris. What did it feel like with those hot dogs behind you the last four laps? Well, I felt pretty nervous. Did you, did you have to step up the pace toward the end? Well, every time I got in traffic, Clark gained on me, so then I had to uh, speed up a little bit when I got a clear track. How about the air, the spoiler? Did it work to your advantage today? Yes, I think it did, Chris. How about the competition? Did you have any problems at all, Hap? Uh, yes, I had plenty of problems with the guys that were in front of me and the guys that were right behind me. Well, did you stay on the asphalt all day? Yes, sir. That's the way. Hap Sharp, the winner of the Los Angeles Times Grand Prix. And that's it from Victory Lane. Well, those aerodynamically sophisticated chaparral put Jim Hall's race team on the map. Subsequent designs, though, were so radical, they were banned, and Hall left racing until 1990, when he announced his return as an IndyCar owner, hoping to relive the glory days. I'm Dave Despain. Join us again next time for another collection of memories from the world of motorsports. <laughs> A barn burner it was, a record crowd, a record purse, and a record race. Chalk up another one for the Chaparral, the Los Angeles Times Grand Prix. <laughs> Shh.